going to get to five balls to watch versus the Hogs. Set up a new poll question. Do you expect Tennessee's players to go to class? How about that? That's a pretty good poll question. Go ahead and pop that up there. As If you can please uh, hit that like button, we would greatly appreciate it. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you could uh, ring that bell. Get the notifications on because we're going to visit with Cooper Mays, I think, later today. So we'll get a pre game look at the Arkansas Razorback. So uh, five balls to watch versus the Hogs. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get it started. Give me number five as we count them down, Caleb. Okay, so number five is, um, oh, do you want to four downs this? No, I'm going to four downs the next one. Go ahead. Oh, five okay, balls sorry. to watch, Caleb Calhoun. Give me I'm that. Sorry. That's all right. Um, Number five is Dylan Sampson. Now, Arkansas started out with a pretty good rush defense. They've had a pretty good one. Uh, they, they held Oklahoma State in check, but they just allowed Le'Veon Moss of Texas A&M to get 117 yards on thir 13 carries. If Le'Veon Moss can do that, Dylan Sampson can get 200 yards on 13 carries. So, yeah. Yep, and it's not, a, it's not really a committee thing. I mean, I know Deshaun Bishop's good, but let's be honest, Dylan is the guy that you want to go to. I went... 30 deep in Heisman odds this morning, and Dylan Sampson was not anywhere on the list. Um, do you think it's just the perception that Tennessee is a passing school and that's why he's not getting his due? Because if I pick – I mean, if he's among the top 30 Heisman candidates, isn't he? He absolutely should be. I mean, he's got 10 touchdowns. It's insane that he's not. I mean, I, um, I was racking my brain writing this column this morning. I'm like, why is he not even being mentioned? Is, is it because he and Bishop look a little bit similar? I mean, I, I don't know. Who's next? What ball do we need to keep an eye on? By the way, I'll go ahead and make my projection. <laughs> Dylan Sampson will have a buck 50 against mm, the next two opponents. I think this is going to be a passing game. Hey now. All right, go ahead. All right, number four for me is Brew McCoy. Um. Noah Thomas of AM just had six catches for 109 yards. He is 6'6, six, six, so these big receivers give Arkansas trouble. The week before, Keandre Lambert Smith of Auburn had five catches for 156 yards and two touchdowns. Brew McCoy was worked a little bit more into the offense against Oklahoma. I think this game is finally the game where Brew McCoy proves he's the number one receiver and goes off. I think he's already proven it. And Tim Banks said this at his press conference yesterday said that he did the right thing in running the right routes that set up many of uh, the ball's explosive plays. So I you think Kelsey Tim Pope, right? Oh, yes, Kelsey Pope. Why would – yeah, I don't know why Tim Banks would say that. Sorry about that. Um, but, yes, um, yeah, Kelsey uh, said that yesterday. Kelsey Pope, Tennessee's receivers coach, is that Brew is getting people open which we uh, long thought would be the case. All right, let's get to the third most important ball uh, brought to you in part by our good friends at Chattanooga Mortgage. Congratulations, your home search just got easier. Buying a home in Chattanooga has never been easier with Chattanooga Mortgage. You can click right below. What else, Caleb? Number three is Keenan Peely. Um, Taylor Green is not that accurate of a passer, but Arkansas's offense is dangerous because he is a dual threat quarterback. Um, I think they're going to want to turn Arian Carter loose and still make a lot of plays. Keenan Peely is the one who's going to have to stay at home. I trust him too. I mean, he was so good at doing it. Jackson Arnold was also a dual threat. And Keenan Peely staying at home is the reason Jackson Arnold got benched and is now no longer the starter. But Michael Hawkins was more of a dual threat, and for what it's worth, did have two touchdowns for Oklahoma on the final quarter. Don't know if that's something that's going to be a long-term thing, but Taylor Green is much more like Michael Hawkins than Jackson Arnold. So this will be a test for Keenan Peely, and he's really, really got to stay at home. Okay, so we're down to number two. As I remind you, portions of the program brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety Great selection and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Impouse chat with two T's.com. Impouse chat with two T's.com. Use the promo code hook for 10% off. Hook for 10% off. Who's next, Caleb? Number two is James Pierce Jr. Is this um, the game where he gets a sack, Caleb? Yes or no? Yes. Now, 
Last week, Arkansas gave up two sacks to Nick Sorton of AM. Sorton is built more like a Tyree West type player. He's like 285 pounds. So he's more of an end who plays up on the line, a hybrid three technique, five technique. Um, but they also gave up two sacks earlier in the year to Obi Azigbo of Oklahoma State, who is a pure edge rusher, uh, just like James Pierce. So in reality on this date, it depends on which side they run to. I think enough has happened at this point, and there have been enough storylines out there that Arkansas is going to be the first team to not go out of their way to avoid James Pierce because it's the, the book is out on Tennessee's defensive line just being impossible to run anywhere now. So I don't think they're going to make as much of an effort to avoid him as other teams have, which is why James Pierce goes off. I agree with you completely. That tends to come around um, when you realize that just because you're running away from James Pierce doesn't mean you're going to have success. And that has been the case with Tennessee's opponents. They haven't had success just staying away from Pierce so or adding extra protection from Pierce. That's opened up people on the other side. So uh, 110% agree. Uh, you mentioned Ty how Tyler Barron benefited, was it two years ago with Byron Young, on the other side. So I think you're seeing that with James Pierce, but I think it flip-flops this week. So good job, Caleb. Who's next? Yep. And number one is the Avi Nico Ia Mali Ava. I, yeah. um, I think Arkansas's offense will test Tennessee more than anybody else. Um, and this will be the first game that Tennessee, it's not that it'll be close necessarily, although I'll give you guys my thoughts on that in a couple of days, but I do think it's the type of game. It'll be the first game that if Tennessee wins, it'll have to be because Nico Iamaliava made some very key plays with his arm. Yes. And I think the only way that Tennessee loses this game is twofold, and you mentioned both of them because the Arkansas quarterback Green uh, can run around. Um, if Tennessee doesn't have proper discipline, he could make this a, a real football game. Um, and the other is that Nico has a bad day because I think that Arkansas, given that Sam Pittman's an offensive lineman, is going to sell out to stop the run. Tennessee is a running football team. I know we. Uh, remind you of that each and every day. And so does Josh Heupel. So I think they're going to sell out to stop the run. And they're actually decent against stopping the run, but they're 14th in the SEC against the pass. So this is the game that you probably wanted to see against Oklahoma that you didn't like to see. I think that Tennessee's going to do uh, quite well. Bank on it. Nico Iamaleava will have over... 300 yards passing bank on it brought to you by commercial bank commercial bank member fdic life made better commercial bank creates positive experiences for every customer every day with better solutions better technology commercial bank for personal and business commercial bank life made better do you agree bank on it brought to you by commercial bank that nico iamaleava will throw for over 300 yards caleb Commercial Bank is your neighborhood bank. What makes us different from other banks? We understand that every customer has unique opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. We don't expect you to fit into the same box as the next person or business. Whether it's purchasing a home, saving for your child's future, or planning for your next vacation, we're with you every step of the way to navigate life's big decisions. Commercial Bank, life made better. All right, so 300 yards. I agree with you. Nico will have 300 yards. Um, okay, I'm not done. 325. Um, oh, you're not going 325? I thought you would definitely go 325. I mean, a lot of if you if you ever look at Josh Heibel's offenses, they never hit the like huge, huge passing yards numbers a lot of times because of the fact because of his running offense and the way he built such huge leads so yeah but you're, this is an old school coach and sam Pittman and a pretty good run defense i think this is the time to take a shot i don't know that Ten tennessee i don't think can necessarily beat arkansas the way they beat oklahoma just by running the football i think that surprised oklahoma and i think tennessee was also very fortunate when they turned the ball over it got flipped uh, immediately, or that's a different football game. 
Okay, you know, you, you talked me into it. I'm going to go 325. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun with Nico. I got money on him winning that Heisman. I need that 325. Come on, bro. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get that. 350. No, nah, I'm not going to go 350. I would put the over under at 312 and a half, and I would take the over. That's bank on it. Brought to you by Commercial Bank. 